walking, walking with God to achieve your new beginning. Praise the Lord. I'm trusting God that at the end of this service, you will know how to walk with God and you will achieve your new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to open our Bible to John chapter 8, verse 12. The Bible said, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not work in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then we'll go again to John chapter 11, 9 and 10. And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles, he, he stumbled not, because he, see, he seeth the light of the world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbled because there is no night in him. There's no light in him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Walking with God to achieve your new beginning. And God says that, are there not 12 hours in a day that a man should walk in. He's saying that within 12 hours is meant for you to be walking. And there are not 12 hours for a man to walk in. Praise God. Hallelujah. And my question is, why did he say, are there not 12 hours that a man should walk in? Why didn't he say, are there not 12 hours that we can work and make money? Or we can work and achieve success, and we can work and do things. Why did he say work? Praise the Lord. Amen. What God is saying there is that you, your work, that is W O R K, cannot be effective if your W-A-L-K is not effective. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you do not work alone. He said, if you walk in darkness, you stumble. He said, I am the light of the world. If any man walk with me, he will see light. Praise God. If any man walk with me, he will not stumble. What's Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, for you to make progress, you have to work with him. You have to work with him. God intervenes in the affairs of those that work with him. Those that don't work with God, God allows them to handle their case by themselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your case is settled as long as you're working, constantly working with God. But if you're not working with God, what will happen is that you will make mistakes. You will stumble. Praise God. Hallelujah. You will be confused. You will make mistakes. And that's why you... You, you start doing something and all of a sudden you find out that you made a lot of mistakes and you start all over again. And sometimes it takes you years to come back to where you were before. Praise God. Hallelujah. True or false? True. But when you work with God, 
You will not make mistakes. Sometimes it looks as if it's working with God takes time. No. Staying with God is the most enjoyable thing you can think of. You can stay with him for hours and he will release you to go and do something for one hour. And that one hour will cover something of three years or five years. Praise the Lord. So working with God helps you not to make mistakes. Praise God. If you work with God, you will achieve your new beginning faster. Some people think God is delaying and they do it in their own way. And then afterwards, they go back again. After they have wasted years. You will not waste years again in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm trusting God that beginning from today, you will begin to walk with God. Amen. You will cultivate the habit of working with God. Amen. It is most profitable thing on earth to walk with God. If you do not walk with God, the Bible says you stumble. You will stumble easily. It's easy for you to stumble. When you walk with God, you'll be able to know the traps that the enemy have set on the way. When you walk with God, when you're walking side by side with him, he will tell you, don't go there because there's trap. And then you will avoid it. Rather, if you're not walking with him, you will go there because it looks attractive. You will move there and you fall and then you come up again and wait and be healed, and years are going before you start, you continue your work again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Working with God, sometimes it appears slow, but it's not slow. It's faster. When you look back, you find that it's faster. It's not slow. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want you to desire in your heart and say, God, I will work with you. To achieve my new beginning. Lord, I will work with you no matter what it takes. I will work with you to achieve my new beginning. The Bible said that Enoch walked with God and he was not found. But God took him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Compare it to Methuselah that lived the longest year. And check what he achieved. Nothing. Because the Bible didn't say that Methuselah walked with God. But Enoch walked with God and he achieved so much. He didn't live as long as Methuselah lived, but he achieved a lot in that short time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Walking with God brings your new beginning faster. Walking with God guarantees your new beginning. Praise God. Also, Noah walked with God. That's why he did not perish when others were perishing. Noah walked with God. If you look at um, Genesis chapter 6 verse 9, the Bible said these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and, a perfect, and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. That's why when others were perishing, Noah did not perish. When others were making mistakes, Noah did not make mistakes. Noah did not stumble. But Noah followed God. He followed his instruction. He, he, he heard from him. And he moved with him. And he did not perish. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you're working with God, the Bible says, that you are here, here, we hear an instruction. He will give you an instruction. He will give you an instruction of where to go. But when you are not working with God, even when an instruction comes, what will happen? You will ignore it. Because it doesn't look palatable. It doesn't look like the news you heard. It doesn't look like what others are doing. You will ignore it. When you are not working with God, you will be so full of yourself you will be so sure that what you are doing is right, and yet 
is a, day, a way of destruction which will make you to come back again. It will make you to spend more years. Praise God. In Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, the Bible says, And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left, praise God. Many of us have wasted many years because we didn't work with God. We were thought we were fast. Isn't it? We thought we were intelligent. We jumped. We jumped the queue only for us to be sent back again when the queue has, been, has now become very long. We jumped the queue and got to the front and were sent back and by that time, the queue is now very, very long. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Beginning from now, you will work with God. Amen. You will not jump the queue. In fact, you will not be sent back again. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. I want us to open our Bible to Luke chapter 5. We're going to study 1 to 7 because this place summarizes all we're talking about the new beginning. Thank God for little Dere <laughs> talk about the passage. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But that was the passage I prepared to teach today. Uh, he, he was in the spirit. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. So here we see Peter. He had a need to have a new beginning. If you look at all the topics we taught and look at this passage, it covered all of them. Peter had a need for a new beginning. Why? He toiled all night and caught nothing. Peter knew what he defined what he wanted when Jesus Christ came. Peter followed a new direction when Jesus gave him a new direction. He said, at your word. I will lay down the net. So in fact, he followed a new direction. Praise God. He followed all the steps that we taught. And he arrived at a new beginning. You will arrive at your new beginning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if we look at... Okay, let's start from verse 1. I want to read verse 1 to 3. And it came to pass that as the people passed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land. And he sat down and thought, thought the people out of the ship. Praise God. The first thing we notice here is that there were two boats. There were two ships there. But Jesus chose one. Ch whose own did he choose? Simon. Simon Peter's. And I want to say that you are representing the Simon Peter's. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. He chose your boat. Amen. Praise Amen. God. He, there are two ships there, but he chose one. What does that tell us? 
The ships there represent your intellect, your possessions, your time, your everything God has given to you. That's what the ship represents. The ship represents your possessions and everything God has given to you. Whereas Peter represents you. Praise God. The other ship represent an alternative. An alternative to all your possessions. An alternative to your intellect. An alternative to your finances. An alternative to your energy. An alternative to your time. That's what the other ship represents. Now I want to ask you a question. If Jesus wanted to use Peter's ship, and Peter refused. What would have happened? He wouldn't have gotten his new beginning. Peter needed a new beginning. Mind you, Jesus did not tell him, Peter, I want to use your boat, and after that I'll give you a new beginning. Of course, everybody will rush to it. But Jesus doesn't do that. He didn't tell him. He didn't tell him, Peter, I want to use your boat, and afterwards, I'll give you a new beginning. He didn't tell him that. And Peter gave him his boat. What would have happened is if Peter had refused that Jesus would give, would use his boat, Peter would have missed his new beginning. Praise God. I pray for you you will not miss your new beginning. Amen. But you need to know there's an alternative to you. There's somebody else there that God will use if you refuse him to use you. There's somebody else that will do what God wants you to do if you refuse him to do it. There's somebody else that God will use to build if you refuse him to use it to build. There's somebody else. I want you to always know that. God always have an alternative. God always have an alternative. Now, Jesus will not come physically and tell you, I want you to do this. No, 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 no. But what will happen? He will speak to you inside. When you are going to the kitchen, you will see, okay, before now, you will see microwave that is spoiled. And Jesus will tell you, you can buy a new one. He said, no, not me. Why will I buy a microwave? Whereas many, there are many people in the church, why should I buy a microwave? What has happened? You've lost something. Praise the Lord. You have lost something. Anytime God gives you an instruction, you say no. You have lost the new beginning that he designed for you. Maybe you're passing and there are things on the floor and he asks you, can you pick it? Why should, we, why should I pick it? I have my own job. I'm in the choir. There are people in the, in the, in, in, in the sanitary department. They should be the one to do it. You've lost something. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have lost something. Each time there's an instruction that you refuse, you have lost something. That's how God operates. He will not tell you, do this and I will do this. Sometimes there's a need in the church. You say, no, not me. I will never do it. You didn't tell anybody. It's in your heart. You said it in your heart. But God heard it. Brethren, what it means is that what God have planned for you, you've lost it. It will be a little thing, sometimes very little. Sometimes very little, and sometimes very big. Sometimes it will cost you something. Or you say, no, I won't do it. You've lost something. If Peter had refused to give God his boat, he has lost something. I want you to know that God constantly asks you for your boat. 
constantly. Every time he constantly asks you for your boats. Each time you refuse, you've lost something. You wouldn't know what you've lost. Because what you lost cannot be related to what he asked you to do. It's not proportional. But you've lost something. I pray for you that beginning from today, you will not lose any other thing in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray for you that each time God asks you to do something, you will jump to do it before any other person. Yeah. Because if you don't, the alternative will jump in. If you don't, the alternative will jump in. Don't think it's only you. Don't think God has only you. No. Don't think God cannot do without you. Many years ago, when we were still renting the Aqua Life Center, we had choir, but that choir was made up of only two families. They usually practice by themselves, and they come to the church, and they will sing. And then this day, I don't know what got into their head. They actually left the church. They came to church, and they left. They want to stop coming to church. They left. They told me later, because those people, after years, they came back to church. They told me later that the way they were in the car park, they were wondering what's going on in the church. Because as soon as they left, a, a, a pianist emerged. As soon as they left, some people came and they sang, and they sang beautifully. When they were in the car park, they were wondering, what's going on? Praise the Lord. God has alternative. They are there. They are hidden. In fact, if you don't want to do it, just say, I'm not going to do it. God will raise another person immediately. Praise the Lord. God have an alternative. If there's anything God is asking you to do, it's because he wants to bless you. Not because if you don't do it, nobody will do it. It's just because he wants to bless you. And believe you me, if you refuse to do it, you have lost something. You have lost your new beginning. You have lost something you've been waiting for, you've been praying for. You've lost it. You're going to start all over again. And that's why many times in the church, you see people praying and crying unto God for a particular thing. And it takes for years. Because each time God asks them to do something, they say no. It's the same God you are asking for something. And he ministers to you, do this. You say, no, I won't do it. And then you go back to your house and begin to beg him, God, I've been asking you for this. He forgotten that he asked you to pick up something. And you say, no, not me. I won't spend my cobble in this church again. If you want anything, go and ask the pastor. Go and ask the pastor. Go and ask him. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is giving you a new chance. God is God of another chance. You can repent and you can tell God, beginning from now, I will jump into anything that you ask me to do. You know, in this church, we don't try to cajole people to do this or do that. No, 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 no. We don't do that because we believe in God. And he has always done everything that we wanted. As a matter of fact, before we moved in here, before we bought this property, there was a, someone that usually pay his tithes to the church. He wasn't living in Perth then. His tithes is a little bit big. He usually pay his tithes. And, some time, and uh, along the way, he got in contact with somebody that told him, don't pay tithe day again. And the person stopped. So, you know, he was one of the, though, one of the people that had in mind that 
if we are going to buy this uh, property and we have problem, we can run to him and see what we can do. But God gave us favor. We bought it, we used our uh, private property as a collateral, and God gave us this place. Praise the Lord. So he cannot lay hold and say, I'm part of those that uh, helped to build, uh, buy this place. God has eternity. God has someone else. The two boats there means that God has someone that he can rely on. He has another person. Praise the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 19, 14 and 18, The Bible says, this is about Elijah. Elijah was feeling that I'm the only one. (laughs) I'm the only super champion. I'm the only superstar. He was depressed because a lot of people have left God and was depressed. He thought he was the only one. In verse 18, the Bible says, now, when he had less speaking, he said unto, sorry, it's not, um, sorry. In verse 18, he said, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto bow, and every mouth which had not kissed him. Praise God. There are 7,000 people that God have hidden. Elijah thought he was the only one. But God has 7,000 people. So tell your neighbor, you're not the only one. God has people. And they will never fail. Praise God. So let's look at verse 4 of Luke chapter 5 verse Luke chapter 5 verse 4 We're looking at the processes that led to uh, Peter having his new beginning Now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon Lodge Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Praise God. This is where many of us miss it. The Bible says, when he has left speaking. He didn't say when he wanted to use the boat. Jesus did not tell Peter, I'm going to use your boat. When I finish using your boat, I'm going to make you to catch more fishes. He didn't tell him that. It only came when he has left speaking, when he has finished using his boat. And I thank God it was also mentioned in the Sunday school today. God blesses at the end, not at the beginning, not in the middle. A number of us will not do anything because we can't see how it relates to our blessing. How does it relate to my blessing? Leave that, Jerry. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because it, you, don't, you cannot connect it to what you are looking for. I'm asking God for a car, and they're asking me to clean. How does cleaning this place relate to the car I'm asking? <laughs> Praise God. God does not bless at the beginning, not in the middle, but at the end. Some people, God will ask them to do something. God will ask them, can I use your boat? Why not? Take my boat. But as God is using it, they're asking, you're not even giving me anything. (laughs) Nothing. They're waiting. You're still using their boat. And he said, you know, nothing. 
Please give me back my boat. They take it back. Praise the Lord. God will start using the, the boat that you lend him. And then at the middle, you took it back. Because he has not given you anything. God does not bless at the middle. God does not cajole people. He cannot come and tell you, give me your boat because I will do this for you. Give me your boat because this is lying in stock for you. No. He wants you to give him his boat because you love him. He wants you to give him his boat because you trust him. And believe you me, the boat you give to him cannot be compared to the blessing that is awaiting you. It cannot be compared. Maybe you're looking for, you want to buy a car, you ask him to give you a car, and he say, give me your boat. Okay. Maybe where he's using my boat, you give me a car. And then why he's using your boat? He has not given you a car. And he's even about to finish. He has not given me my car. You took back your boat because the cleaning does not relate to the car you're looking for. Brethren, I want to tell you that what God wants to give you is more than that car you're looking for. It's not just the car you're looking for. It's not just your prayer point. You know, when you look at the case of uh, Peter, do you know that when Peter when Jesus wants to bless Peter, if Jesus had given Peter ten fishes, what do you think Peter would do? He would have jumped up. I've been here all night. I've ransacked every part of this water. I didn't get fish. But now I got ten. At least I can show that I, have, I didn't waste my time. He would be happy for ten. Praise God. But God does not do that. He gives you abundantly more than ever you can ask of. In the magnitude relating to what you did cannot be compared. What God wants to do for you and what he's asking you for cannot be compared. Sometimes our brain cannot comprehend it. Praise God. It's not just your prayer point that God wants to do for you. He wants to do for you greater than your prayer points. He knows that you have a need. Do you, do you, don't you think that God knows that you have a need? Do you think God is so wicked that after you've served him with all your heart, he will just, allow, you just say, go. Thank you. He, he doesn't do that. It's not after using Peter's boat. He said, Peter, thank you. Take your boat. I'm coming back again to use it. <laughs> Praise God. He's not wicked. He knows your need. He knows the new beginning you want. He knows where you're going. He knows the destiny. Praise God. I don't want you to miss your new beginning. I want you to be sensitive beginning from today. Be sensitive. You might be in your house and God will speak to you. Run and do it. Sometimes if you don't run, by the time you come back, somebody has done it. So whenever God put it in your heart, go and do it straight away. Whatever God asks you to do, go and do it straight away. Because he knows the end from the beginning. And you that have made up your mind say, I will never do this. I want you to change it. Because that could be what is hindering your blessings. That could be what is hindering your new beginning. Because I will never do this. And each time God will point your eyes, do this. No. No. You point your eyes, you take your eyes to another place. Because I don't want to do it. And then when you finish, you go back, you kneel down, you ask, <laughs> you ask him. The same person you refuse to do something for. Praise God. 
today, you're going to change any of those decisions you've made. Those decisions are what is holding you in one place. And God will bless you more abundantly as you do that in Jesus' name. Our God is not a tax master. He wants relationship. He wants relationship. He's not do this, I'll do this for you. Do this, I'll do this. No. He wants relationship. He wants relationship. So if he asks you to do something, he wants to build relationship with you. Sometimes he wants to build good relationship before he starts doing anything with you. Praise God. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he said, Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think of. Praise God. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than the new beginning you're asking for. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than anything you, that can come to your brain. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than that. You're not working for any man. You're working towards your new beginning. Peter would have lost his new beginning. He wouldn't have, he would have been like a failed fisherman. He has been there. He toiled all night. Do you know, it, when Peter said we've toiled all night, it's not exactly the truth. You know why? Because if it's that he toiled all night, in the morning he would have gone. But he toiled all night, in the morning he continued. Because he doesn't want to go home with shame. Praise God. He didn't want to go home with shame. So he was trying to do everything he can. Trying, trying. Because he didn't want to go home with shame. I, I want to tell you, if Peter had gotten massive fish in the midnight, you won't see him in the morning. Anytime he had gotten massive gotten fish, you won't see him. But he was there because he had not gotten anything. He wanted to prove himself as a great fisherman. Brethren, if Peter had disobeyed this instruction, he would have gone home with shame. He would have gone home with shame. So you will not go home with shame in Jesus' name. Amen. That means you have to be sensitive to instruction of God so that you will not be in shame. Anybody that disobeys God meets shame. If God asks you to do something and you say, no, I'm not going to do it. What is I waiting for such a person is shame. But because you are hearing me today, those shame that the enemy has planned against you is canceled in Jesus' name. Amen. You will meet your breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, like I said before, a number of people have stayed in one place or even going down and down, shame and shame and shame, because each time God asks them to do something, they say no. And they continue to go around like this, continue to go around like this. Because God has impressed something in their heart, and they say, is it only me? Must I do it? Other, other people could do it. And then they continue to go round and round. Ask the man with, um, with palsy, the man with, that, that has been in the same place for 38 years. If you ask him, he will tell you that every year, God gives him an opportunity, but he had done his heart, and God counted it for him as sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every year, every year, there's an opportunity given to him. Every year, God brings another opportunity. He refused. That's why when Jesus healed him, he told him, don't sin again, so that a greater thing will not come to you. When God asks you to do something and you refuse, it's counted as sin. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. It's counted as disobedience. And it can keep you in one place. It kept that man in one place for 38 years. If you look at John chapter 5, 3 to 9, he kept him in one place for 38 years until Jesus came. Until Jesus intervened in his case. I pray for you. Although you've been kept in one place for many years, Jesus will intervene in your case today in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus will intervene in your case in Jesus' name. Amen. And you will sing a new song in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He wants you to have a new beginning. He wants you to have a new beginning. He's interested in you having a new beginning. And it will be accomplished in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, let's look at Luke chapter 5. 5 to 7. The Bible says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had, when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. Praise God. Peter did not say, Jesus, I'm not really seeing you fishing and you're telling me to lay down my net here. I'm a professional fisherman for many years. He didn't say that. He said, nevertheless, there are things God has told you to do. It could be hard, but what you can tell God is, nevertheless, I will do it. Nevertheless, I will do it. Do you think God enjoys your toiling? Do you think God enjoys that you pray and pray and the answers are not coming? No. That's why he intervened in that man that had the issue for 38 years. Because he doesn't enjoy you groaning. He doesn't enjoy you every year having an unanswered prayer. But one thing is needful. You need to tell God, nevertheless, I'm not going to harden my heart again. Nevertheless, I'm not going to take your work for a joke anymore. I'm not going to do as if it doesn't consign me. Your work doesn't consign me. There are other people that it concerns. That thing that is out of your way, if you do what is out of your way, God will do things that are also out of the way. He will do it for you. Praise God. If you keep on saying, I must do only what I'm, I'm asked to do, I will not go to any other place then you will get only what you are supposed to get. You will not get any other thing. Do not harden your heart when God is speaking to you. Your new beginning is right here. Amen. Your new beginning is right here. Amen. On Friday, the Lord told us that he's opening doors for us to eat the fruit of the land. But we must be willing and obedient. We must be willing and obedient. I want us to talk to God because our time is far spent. I want us to rise up and talk to God. I want you to talk to God. And tell God to help you. I want you to repent. 
Many times you've hardened your heart. I want you to repent and ask God to help you. God wants to touch you today, but you need to repent of all those hardened, hardness in your heart. Remove them. Go all out and do whatever God asks you to do. That reminds me, at the end of this service, oh, I'm, I'm going to pray for two families. One saw that our um, vacuum cleaner is spoiled. They went back and talked to one another and said, we can do it. And they bought it. And they brought it. I'm sure they don't want people to know they are the one that did it. But we're going to pray for them. And the other family 